Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Oh my God. It's fucking Steve O. What's going on, man? Dylan, bro. Ah, uh, well, hey, I'm Ned from Rock 108. I'm at a radio station here in eastern Iowa. Dude, it is more than an honor and a pleasure to be talking to you, man. I've been watching you since God where when it all started. When it all fucking started, man. Well, thanks, dude. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Of course, you got your show coming here, Eastern Iowa at the Paramount Theater, July 10th. It's the triple uh, X rated bucket list tour. You're bringing it here and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be there, man. I got to see what you have in store for this show. Brad, dude, it's gnarly, man. It's uh, it literally is triple X rated uh, because there's there's one scene where I'm uh, completely naked. <laughs> With another yeah. man strapped to my back, vigorously uh, jacking off, <laughs> and I actually time it so that when I I blast, I'm simultaneously falling out of an airplane. I call the idea I call the stunt skyjacking, and uh, it, it's so utterly ridiculous, man, that uh, I consider it the crown jewel of my entire career. And there's stunts I did for this tour that are completely illegal. Mm -hmm. Like um, I got a medical professional in disguise to administer stolen general anesthesia drugs while I was riding a bicycle. What? <laughs> Good God, yeah. man. And, uh, and I got another medical professional in disguise to put a four inch needle into my spine to uh, in inject a drug into my spinal cavity at, to render me paralyzed while I was in a full sprint. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you basically yeah. got yourself an epidural when you were pregnant. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. I think that's te technically what it is. Yeah. Uh, it's a drug, a drug called chloroprocaine. And uh, they inject it into your spinal cavity. Oh, my God, man. I mean, I'm sure you've been asked this question 9,000 times. But where the hell do you come up with it? Um, it there's different ideas. There are different ideas come from different uh, places and, and inspirations. Mm. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, it's just the, it's always about just trying to get crazier than ever before. Yeah. And, um, you know, and it's so fun now that, like, my approach to touring has become this multimedia thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, uh, I was in comedy clubs touring, like, you know, sort of quietly and under the radar for 11 years yeah. in comedy clubs, just kind of developing this craft of uh, stand up and storytelling. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I got good enough that I I've been able to graduate to big theaters and now it's this multimedia thing where I actually go about doing the craziest stuff ever with no insurance, <laughs> with no, like, you know, just on my own back. And so yeah. there's no, uh, you know, there's, there's no like major motion picture movie association or OSHA right. or like cops, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. you know, I just do, I just, I just let it ride. And, yeah. and I, uh, you know, so it's, it's so much fun. I'm able to do whatever I want and I'm able to do things that I would never be able to do for jackass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and when you think about it, I mean, even looking at like the most recent video, the recent movie and even the old shows and everything like that, you think, you don't think it can get any crazier, but obviously the tour that you're about to go and show with the world is the exact, well, it can get crazier. It absolutely can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and and it, it, it'll continue to get crazier after this too i uh i'm i'm, I'm ready man yeah. yeah so so i i was gonna be great and um i got two shows in iowa i've got cedar rapids and i've got clear lake yep yeah you're going up to i think in clear lake is the uh the surf ballroom i believe is what it's called yeah and uh, uh -huh. that's a historical place man if you know your rock and roll history that's where this so the so-called rock died is where you know the big bopper and buddy holly and everyone died from the plane crash and they're ah look at the puffy oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to the historical place but you're stopping here in cedar rapids first which is where we are at 
on July 10th in just a couple days, actually, which is pretty gnarly, man. Wow. Yeah. How about that? It's in two days. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So I, I've noticed that you're clearly in you, it, where you do uh, Steve-O's Wild Ride. You're doing all the interviews and such, which is so cool and so much fun to watch and uh, intoxicating to kind of listen to because you have such a history about uh, dealing with the stuff that you've had and then talking to people like Knoxville and having musicians in and, and, and big name actors and whatnot, which is so cool to see. Um, is there anyone on the uh, <clears throat> on the Wild Ride podcast that you would still love to have? I did. We had Snoop Dogg booked and he uh, canceled on us oh. like five minutes before we were all set up. We had everything ready to go. Mm. And, uh, you know, he, he canceled on us and never rebooked it, which, oh. which really, which stings to this day, man. Cause I would have loved to have uh, talked to, um, yes. would have loved to, yeah to talk to snoop yeah it's, it's snoop dog dude i mean like he transcends like time like even rockers love snoop dog even country musicians love even martha stewart loves snoop dog i mean come on man right i know <laughs> So one of the recent things you said in a, in, a, in a recent interview, I don't know where you were talking to or whatnot, is that you said that even you agree that you were a bad influence on kids in the early 2000s. And I got to tell you, man, I was one of those kids. I definitely, around that time, no doubt, I mean, this is jackass in general, but I definitely put my friend in a shopping cart. I mean, who didn't? <laughs> yeah, I love that. Like, I, I have a publicist who sent me that article from a Variety. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, FYI, Variety put this, and I was, and I, and I emailed back. Uh, I, I call it how I see it, man. The, the article said Stevo says uh, Jackass was worth vilifying back uh, in the early days, yeah. and, and I think that's true. A lot of kids got hurt, you know, inspired by Jackass to do that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Even though there's a little warning at the beginning, it's like, you know, around that age, man, you feel like you're invincible and you can just go and do it. No big deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. It's, uh, it's more of a dare than a warning. Right. Exactly. Yeah, it's exactly what it was, uh, man. Yeah. So even looking back, you know, and, and especially with the career that you've had and obviously still going on with with some of the gnarly shit that you're doing. Um, you know, do you think like in today's world, like with, uh, with the availability of the internet and, and all this shit that's available now you can do it. So do you think jackass would be like as successful as today as it was, if it was to come out in 2022 versus like 1999, 2000? It's a. Uh... It's an interesting question, man. And, uh, you know, it, it only becomes more interesting. Mm -hmm. Like for me, when I came up, you know, when I first started getting noticed, yeah, I, I had to uh, duplicate VHS videotapes on video cassette recorders oh, yeah. and then <laughs> physically walk over to the post office and mail these videotapes you know to, to wherever and um there was no such thing as the internet at that time yeah. or maybe there was maybe there was there was the internet but there was not the capacity to play video on the right. internet yeah so it was physically mailing videotapes to people who i thought might watch them mm. and uh, by that measure there was not so much noise to compete with you know, there was uh, like, um, and uh, I, I think that had I been born 20 years later, mm -hmm. uh, you know, would, I, I, I genuinely believe that I'm just such a persistent and, and you know, like driven guy some like and and i'm speaking in terms of being an attention whore you know like <laughs> like the, the the extent to which i crave attention mm. is so so utterly off the charts that i mm. just i just believe that nothing would have ever stopped me from uh from rising above the noise no matter when i was born yeah um, you know especially when you look at uh you know like the the, the insane meteoric success that uh you know, random people are able to accomplish on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think I would have pulled it, but uh, I'm glad that I don't have to find out. 
You know, I'm glad yeah. that I that I got my foot in the door a lot earlier on because, um, yeah, because opportunities are dwindling in the yeah. world, man. Because there's so many of them now. I mean, because of like Twitch and like you said, YouTube and especially like TikTok, that seems to be a huge thing. I'm yet to really get on that platform at all. But it's just so easy for someone to just go in their living room and all of a sudden start, I don't know, reacting to videos. And then all of a sudden they're like making millions of dollars from just react videos. Right. I mean, yeah. dude, it's a crazy, it, it's a crazy time in the yeah. world, man. It, yeah. it, it, it really, it really is. Yeah. And it's cool that, I mean, that, like when you were mentioning about how you had to send in VHS tapes, I'm a huge guy for like physical media. So like VHSs and cassette tapes and vinyl records. So I'm just like, it's so humbling to hear like, yeah, I had to put it on a VHS tape and send it in. I'm like, those are good times, man. I mean, at the time we didn't think so, but nowadays you look back and you're like, that was kind of hey. cool. Think about it. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was, it was great, man. Like uh, that's all we had at that time. And I remember thinking that, you know, we're all going to be dead, but I'm going to have these videotapes that can play after yeah. I die. Right. making me immortal mm -hmm. you know like i, I there, there, there was a, a a perceived permanence to it that yeah. uh that i was so um just in love with yeah and yeah. then and then when uh and then when jackass came out i realized oh footage isn't immortal <laughs> it's got an expiry date like the second it comes out on tv it's old news and then it's yeah. like well what do you got what do you got next right yeah and it became like the idea of uh establishing a, a legacy that was immortal really turned into a reality of just chasing this spotlight and then mm -hmm. this depressing dark that's like like the you know i think a lot of people do understand that the idea of uh, of fame you know is is a really dark exercise and chasing the spotlight because you know like once you get a taste of it it's the most addicting thing ever and yeah yeah man it'll drive you crazy man yeah it'll, it'll make you it'll, it'll make you nuts yeah but and then like you were mentioning a little earlier about how you're always like kind of that attention guy i'm kind of the same way i always kind of look for like that big next thing because it becomes that addiction in a way it's like ah oh, yeah you, you get that crowd that's excited to see you or whatever you're announcing a band it's just so cool to see like everyone react in that way and so you keep chasing it you keep chasing it for sure yeah man so for sure again july 10th paramount theater come check out steve-o and i got one last thing for you because i know you probably got a busy schedule so i won't bother you too much but uh you and to kind of go with that whole digital thing you were a guest on one of my favorite video game shows online called game, uh, grumps. Was it game grumps yeah, yeah that was that, that was a, a particularly hilarious uh <laughs> time in my life they got yeah. a really uh they got a really really uh un, unhinged steve-o on that <laughs> interview i remember yeah. <laughs> yeah pretty great well hey man thank you so much dude i am yes. looking forward to, to seeing the rapids and i can assure everybody the the bucket list tour i'm bringing to the paramount theater and see mm. the rapids is it is absolutely insane there's actually like legal waivers like posted around because i'm legitimately afraid of being sued <laughs> because because yeah. there's the show so gnarly the mm. footage that i screen during the show I screen footage that has proven to be so messed up yeah. that I regularly have full grown men fainting in the audience. Holy Not shit. That it, it doesn't happen all the time, but we yeah. average one guy per show. Oh like, like on, on average, one full grown man will pass out in the audience at every show. That's saying something, man. That is some, <laughs> like you said, gnarly ass shit. So <laughs> it's really, really gnarly. And I couldn't be more thrilled about it. Couldn't be more proud of it. And uh, really stoked to come to Iowa. Heck yeah, man. July 10th in a couple days here. Um, get your tickets right now. CREventsLive.com, yeah. man. And, and, my, and uh, hit up my publicist too. Um, tell him I want you to have free tickets and meet and greet passes so I can say what's up after the show. Oh my god, dude! You'd blow my fucking mind if they. <laughs> yeah, uh, hey, I, do, I do that regularly. It's there's nothing unusual about it. My publicist, like, hey, I just interviewed Steve-O. He wants me to have uh, you know, free tickets and, and meet and greet. 
Oh, that would so, be yeah. amazing, man. I'd be that would be an absolute pleasure, dude. Thank you so much. Come on, man. Well, I'll see you in a couple of days, brother. Well, real one quick. We have to take a quick picture for the blog. So you just have to do like a quick still shot. So in three, two, one. All right, cool, man. <laughs> All, All right, brother. Take Sunday, care. Man. All right, later, Steve.